I wanted to talk about this quickly because it kind of is a bit of a bee my bonnet. So most of you are aware that these Jordan 1s are due to be coming out very soon, right? They're the Air Jordan 1 Lost and Found Chicago Reimagined. And as you can see here from the opening picture taken from Sneaker News, the idea behind it is that you take an Air Jordan 1 and you essentially distress it artificially to make it look like it's a Jordan that you plucked out from some dusty mom and pop somewhere, uh, pops, some dusty mom and pop shop somewhere that's been lying there since 1985. So you've got the crackled um, leather here on the collar, the top, you've got the kind of dyed midsole there to make it look like it's been yellowed once it's been in the box obviously the polyurethane sort of like wearing away then you've got the white sort of stains on there on the outside that you're all kind of familiar with you've got a few smudges here on the upper as well to kind of give that effect so you know the standard sort of vintage effect people do but from what i've kind of understood it's essentially been um made from the reference of an old 1985 Jordan which I don't believe because the shape is completely different but they've essentially gone to great measure to make sure these look similar to a 1985 Jordan they've added obviously the pre-distressed marks on it and they've also gone the extra way by adding a distressed box that's similar to boxes that you would find if you were to pick up this shoe you know many years after the fact from a mom and pop store especially since the top of the box has been sort of like um exposed to light and it's darkened out a little bit or some sorry the, the edges have darkened out um have faded out sorry due to being exposed to light and all this good stuff so it's a pretty interesting and a cool way to go about things but the thing that really sort of pissed me off when i saw this number one is the fact that the shape is just like in any any other jordan one that you would get high but i guess the materials have been improved and obviously the finish is quite nice so it's not that dissimilar to any other jordan that you would have bought in over the last few years australia jordan one you've bought the last few years but the thing that really annoyed me the thing I really got under my skin was this little note they're going to be sticking on the inside. So on the inside of the box, they're going to have this little um, invoice receipt type thing that you would have kind of been aware of if you were maybe gone to your shops back in the day or maybe you went to a store that didn't have like an electronic till that you sometimes fill out the receipt by hand and give you the receipt on like a little bit of parchment paper. It's like, a, you know, it kind of transferred onto the sheet underneath. And then of course they'd file the other one for their records or when they do the accounting. But the reason why this really annoyed me because this obviously takes a nod at the sort of like mum and pop stores where you would be able to maybe find these shoes back in the day or maybe if you're kind of buying them after the fact, it would be a good place to go find vintage shoes after the fact because this is where, you know, a lot of those shoes were sold but maybe not people didn't know and they had loads of dead stock down in the stock room. Now, the issue for me about this whole entire thing is that from working in retail and from being somebody that worked in various shops, shops in London, especially during the trendiest time of sneakers and streetwear and whatnot, one thing that I knew that Nike were really sort of like stern on was stores and limiting the amount of stores that were able to sell limited edition tier zero kind of like, you know, shoes that people wanted and went to queue for, went to flip and all that stuff. And what they initially done, from what I remember, is that a lot of these independent stores, because that's basically what mom and pop stores are, right? Or were before, you know, now they're basically a different name. They're basically indie stores. But essentially, these mom and pop stores, they were basically forced into a position where they had to buy large amounts of other Nike product, other mainline stuff that they probably couldn't shift in order for them to have the chance to be able to purchase some of that limited edition stuff that they knew could sell. So as your mom and pop store, you were caught in a weird predicament because you knew you needed to get the latest Jordan. You needed to get the latest whatever it may be air max because that was the only way you're going to increase the foot flow into your store and i'd imagine a lot of retail stores they have a real big um onus or they kind of are really pushy about making sure they can get people inside the store because they know that's the only way they're going to increase sales across the board if you have an empty store you know it's pretty obvious to know that you're going to not have that many sales but if you can get people in just even if they're going to only buy that limited edition shoe you never know what they might also pick up along the way out so those kind of releases were really big um, or really big kind of money earner or it was a big way for them to kind of just get people inside the store. I know same thing used to happen with like Nike SB stores too, right? They'd have the same sort of issue as well. They'd have to buy all these other mainline SBs that would never ever sell. But then the only time the shop was full was when they dropped a limited edition Nike SB. So it was really kind of annoying. So essentially over time, I felt like that Nike policy and maybe changes in the economy essentially single-handedly led to the um, demise of mom and pop stores. And then later on, this same strategy also led to the demise or, or the conventional demise that we would see of a kind of um, independent store. Think of something like a foot patrol, right? It was once independent, then it got bought out by size and now it's turned into essentially an independent, a, 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 a independent no, it's turned into like a major high street store 
cosplaying as an independent store because it's basically owned by JD Group. So there's nothing really indie about it whatsoever. But obviously, because they do cool things, cool collaborations, and they let it kind of operate on its own little island, um, it can kind of seem like it's it's more than what it is. But it really is just a mainstream kind of high street store that's kind of like draped in a sort of um, independent camo. And I feel like this is really done in bad taste because, like I said, I feel like they were responsible for killing mom and pop stores. And now many years later, they're now trying to, you know, give them a nod and give them credit and shine some light on that whole entire era by putting the slip inside of the box of a shoe that doesn't even look like it's been made in 1985. It just looks like a shoe that's been stained nowadays. So it's really, really poor in that regard. But again, you know, corporations are also always going to what? Always going to cooperate. So I shouldn't be that surprised. I shouldn't be that surprised.